In today's video, we wish to share a message from the Most Holy Virgin Mary to Luz de Maria, hoping it serves as a means for self-reflection for all of us in this dark age. After watching, please leave a comment below to share your thoughts. We are honored to have you join us in building a better community. Now, let's begin the message. Humanity currently places greater emphasis on caring for the physical body rather than the spirit. In valuing the physical, you have neglected my son, you have exiled and mocked him. You fail to recognize and love him. You forge relationships without my son's approval, distancing yourself from the church to conceal the disobedience and pride some of my children hide. You cultivate your own spirituality and practice it as you see fit, even faking a personal relationship with my Divine Son. As my Jesus instructs, humanity must live in brotherhood and harmony within society. A fraternal society would experience less conflict, rivalry, and selfish ambition. Dear children, it is human folly that is pushing humanity toward the brink of destruction. Yes, this destruction is advancing to a point where it will no longer be possible to prevent conflict. The current struggle is causing a significant catastrophe that will ultimately lead to the demise of humanity and the earth. This is the reality many of my children face, living without any sign of God, in complete dryness, like aimless wanderers in deep pain who refuse to seek relief. Certain forces have initiated the destruction of humanity, firing weapons from hell itself. Those who refuse to convert, even at the last moment, will reflect the devastation that will befall the earth. The followers of my son must not partake in these actions that my holy Lord vehemently condemns. The time has come, entrust yourself to the Most Holy Trinity without worrying about the past or the future. As their children, you will not be abandoned. Come to me with humility and meekness, confident that you will not be left alone, and allow me to guide you in the right direction. I bless you, my dear children. The word, tomorrow, can seem magical to those who often procrastinate. Dirty dishes appear to vanish, difficult conversations seem to resolve, emails disappear, and household projects wait patiently with a simple wave of tomorrow. It feels wonderful to push today's responsibilities into tomorrow's haze. Tomorrow is always ready to accept them. Indeed, we could tackle these tasks today, but why bother when tomorrow is on the horizon? If difficult tasks are thorns today, they won't magically transform into roses tomorrow. The thorns will remain unwanted as before, and we will still have to deal with them, whether today or tomorrow. The flawed division of these two days often leads to various problems. Consider the emotion of worry. Jesus once said, Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. People often try to reach over the fence and bring some of tomorrow's troubles into today, but God desires us to live within the 24-hour boundary called today. What was Jesus' response? Tomorrow's troubles are unnecessary, today's challenges are sufficient. Those who procrastinate do the opposite, they transfer today's problems to tomorrow in hopes they will simply vanish. Unfortunately, our inner procrastinator is surprisingly resistant to reason. Proverbs 24 verse 30 states, I passed by the field of a sluggard, by the vineyard of a man lacking sense. Thus, our Lord extends not only extra grace but also common sense, He offers a double promise, strength for today and a harvest for tomorrow. When faced with today's difficulties, why do so many of us prefer to wave the magic wand of tomorrow? We often feel incapable due to this mindset. Right now, we may lack the energy to clean the restroom today, we may feel unmotivated to finish the paper. We might not feel inspired to create anything new. 
Whether or not we pray for strength, we tend to step back and say, tomorrow. Some individuals wait to start working until they feel strong, while others begin with the expectation of gaining strength. The latter understand that motivation to tackle unpleasant tasks comes to those who expect it. Those who respond to their lack of motivation with sincere prayer and an uplifted gaze, even if today's grace hasn't arrived, will find it more than sufficient to handle today's challenges. Thus, the wise learn to respond not tomorrow, but today, trusting that help is on the way. When confronted with an unpleasant responsibility in sensing our own weakness, the book of Proverbs places procrastination in the context of harvest. Proverbs 24 states, The sluggard does not plow in the autumn, he will seek at harvest and have nothing. The sole reason our inner procrastinator favors tomorrow is that he cannot see it clearly. If he could, he would recognize the approaching harvest and understand that tomorrow's empty field might be today's nap. In other words, we sow today and reap tomorrow. What happens, for example, when a young man consistently delays tasks everywhere instead of occasionally, when he repeatedly plants the seed of procrastination, family and friends will soon learn not to rely on him, as he often fails to keep promises for today. His colleagues will come to expect subpar work from him, as it is often rushed at the last moment. Eventually, others will stop requesting much from him, preferring he handle it himself or find someone else. His relationships and life will eventually be overwhelmed by the thorns he refuses to remove. Proverbs 15 verse 19 states, The way of a sluggard is like a hedge of thorns, but the path of the upright is a level highway. Such a person recognizes that even the most enjoyable aspects of life require tackling numerous unpleasant duties, homes are built, relationships repaired, friendships maintained, vows honored, and children disciplined and raised. Churches are planted and nurtured, and vocations achieved through accepting the undesired. Therefore, he considers the harvest with every indication of the future. For now, we are surrounded by thorns, and our daily to-do lists are full of unwanted tasks. One day, once our God has cleared the land, instead of thorns, cypress will grow, instead of briars, myrtle will flourish. But for now, we are enveloped by thorns. By confronting today's thorns with today's mercy, we can honor God in many ways, as no unpleasant task becomes any less so by postponing it until tomorrow. Common sense urges us to act, and God's promises encourage us to do so, for daily challenges require daily strength, and the seeds we sow today will yield a beautiful harvest tomorrow.